How's it going, everybody? It's Yeong here, and welcome to day 10 of the Final Fantasy 15 countdown retrospective. Fun fact, 10 happens to be the number of years that it took to make this game, so yeah, we can wait a little longer. Before you proceed, I highly recommend you check out day 11, in which I discussed news and footage from both Gamescom and PAX Prime 2015. In this video, I'll be talking about all the new information and footage that yielded from Tokyo Game Show 2015. There's a lot to talk about, so without further ado, let's dive right into it. Now, before we move past PAX Prime 2015, one thing I forgot to mention in my last video is that game director Hajime Tabata also announced during the event that Square Enix would be hosting a major event in March 2016, where they would officially announce the release date of Final Fantasy XV. As we know today, this event came to be known as Uncovered Final Fantasy XV, but we'll talk about that later. So, moving past PAX, this brings us directly to September 16th, 2015, just before the start of Tokyo Game Show 2015. On this date, Square Enix released another trailer for the highly anticipated title, this one titled Dawn 2.0. Check it out. Following the release of this trailer, three days later, on September 19th, 2015, Square Enix hosted yet another active Time Report livestream, through which they once again shared a ton of new details. Website Nova Crystallis did a really good job in summarizing all the details, so let's check out their article on the matter, which reads as follows. The Conflict with Niflheim the Niflheim Empire has achieved world domination, except for the Kingdom of Lucis, who has defied them with the Crystal's power. Regis King Regis is the Crystal's current guardian, and he too can wield weapons from thin air. In his youth, he fought beside Sid and General Kor. Wondering why Regis has aged so dramatically, it lies in the need of his energy to maintain the shield around Lucis. Luna Luna is a highly revered oracle, with the ability to talk to the gods. She is the youngest oracle ever. Also, what's that double-sized spear Luna's holding? Luna lives in Tenebrae, a city under Niflheim control that has some autonomy thanks to her role as oracle. She is courageous, unfazed, even when surrounded by the Niflheim soldiers, as she possesses extreme inner strength. Luna and Noctis made a promise as children. Square Enix isn't saying what yet, but it connects to the story. The Black-Haired Woman In the new artwork of Luna, there is a black-haired woman behind Luna. Her name is Gentiana, and she plays an important role. New gameplay footage Chocobos can be rented in Gil for up to 30 days and called at any time. While riding Chocobos, you can press the jump button again to make it try to stay airborne. When you get off a Chocobo, it will follow you for a while. You cannot raise or breed chocobos, and you can catch fish of all sizes in bodies of water, using various different rods to cook up back at camp. Here is the gameplay footage in question for those who haven't seen it yet.
どの辺まで行く時間はまだいっぱいあるね俺たちのんびりやってるよね時間気にしてねえからな食事でもするか。Moving on, we have Q and A session. They're considering adding Gilgamesh and others into the game via DLC. Chocobos can be called with a whistle, so you won't always have to go to the Chocobo post to get them. They will be rentals and can be rented out for several days. The Chocobo will follow you around when you're not riding on them, but will leave after a while. But no worries, they'll come back if you blow the whistle. 
There won't be any double jumps in Final Fantasy XV, but there will be aerial combos. Final Fantasy XV will feature various minigames called activities, such as fishing, chocobo racing against NPCs, and more. There won't be a chocobo raising breeding system like in Final Fantasy VII, but there will be a way to track which chocobo you've been riding, along with special buffs such as increased speed. Hajime Tabata said that if they're able to add things into Final Fantasy XV, they will, even if it means having to do so through DLC. If they are to add airships through DLC, it will be a free download. There will be a variety of familiar magic for Final Fantasy XV, and one brand new main magic. Guns won't have combos similar to regular weapons, but they will have rapid fire shots and will require reloads. Think of them as traditional gameplay with guns in other games. There will be a variety of lures for fishing, and Square Enix are considering adding special rods that you might be able to get from certain NPCs. Hajime Tabata says that Final Fantasy XV's Zero rating will be at around 0B or C, around ages 12 and up. There will be a variety of foods that you can cook up, along with cooking skills. You'll get something for defeating Archaeans, summoned beasts, as in something to prove that you beat them and will sometimes get to borrow their power after doing so. There are plans to have other languages voicing to be available via DLC. There will be scenes that show Luna Freya fighting, but that's all they were able to say for now. Players won't be able to equip sub-weapons, but other party members will be able to. For example, Gladio can equip a shield. Players can rotate through various weapons, but party members will switch through their sub-weapons. The Black Chocobo isn't just a regular Chocobo. You won't be able to go inside all of the buildings, but there are plenty you will get to enter. Tabata would like to add stuff like background stories of when the characters were in high school and other similar episodes. He'd like for fans to be able to see more of the characters from when they were younger, so they can get to know them better, rather than just from what's going on in the current story. This seems to be hinting at Brotherhood Final Fantasy XV, if you noticed. Sydney is the Japanese name, Cindy is the English name. Tabata calls her Cindy while speaking to the Western media and vice versa. There will be more music and changes to the game. For example, you'll get a different song while dashing on a chocobo. After a while of consideration, Square Enix dropped the idea of having Moogle in Final Fantasy XV. However, if there's enough demand for it, they'll find a way to put them in the game. There won't be any limit breaks from Final Fantasy VII in the game, but there will be something similar. When fields are connected, there won't be any required loading time while traveling. There will, however, be some when the story moves you from place to place. More details on Final Fantasy XV, such as character or monster profiles, will be revealed periodically before March, when they're expected to announce the release date of the game. So that about concludes all the new information from TGS 2015's Active Time Report livestream. Following the event, Tabata did a number of interviews with various Japanese media outlets like Famitsu, through which he shared a number of information. On September 21st, 2015, website Nova Chrysalis released an article reporting some news story details that Tabata shared in his Famitsu interview, stating the following. Luna and Noctis' wedding is meant to take place in Alticia, located in Accordo. The signing ceremony takes place when Noctis and friends are heading there. Luna is heading there as well. If you pay attention to the new artwork of Luna, she is actually in a certain location in Alticia. It appears the near-death experience that Noctis and Stella had from Versus 13 still lives on in Final Fantasy XV with Noctis and Luna. Despite images of a young Noctis, we won't be seeing his growth as a child to an adult. Instead, the game starts when he has already grown at the time of the peace treaty. We will learn about childhood stories during the events of the game. Tabata did mention that we will see Luna fight. Her battle will be as a guest party member. But unlike Kor joining your battle, you will actually join hers at some point in the game. Noctis' father, King Regis, is around 50 years old at the start of Final Fantasy XV, but he's already aged well beyond that due to maintaining the magic barrier around Lucis. The quick aging is the unfortunate fate of the king, according to Tabata. Noctis could also meet this fate if he inherits the throne. Because of this, Regis is torn on whether or not he should let Noctis become the next king. When a king of Lucis dies, their wisdom gets passed to the next generation, thus the royal line lives on. 
That ring that Nomura mentioned in the past as a significant object is in fact inherited by the person next in line for the throne of Lucis. Naturally, Regis possesses one of these rings. What happens to the ring during Lucis' invasion? This is a key point. The ring contains both the wisdom and power of the previous king of Lucis. The summoned swords are also inherited from each previous king. In the story, there are items, such as the weapons of previous kings, that Noctis must collect no matter what. Regarding summons, Tabata says that there aren't many in the game. You'll encounter them in the story and they won't care at all about what's happening in the human realm. We don't know what they think either. Summons have their own intelligence, gender, and willpower. Their behavior is very different from that of humans. They play an important role in the concept of the power of the stars. Then, in a separate article released the following day on September 22, 2015, Nova Chrysalis shared even more details from the Famitsu interview, stating the following. Meteor. Meteor of Lestalum is as old as the Genesis story of 15. It's not something Noctis and his friends will investigate while on their journey, because the meteor's existence is already there since the beginning of time, as it were. Car radio. About installing a car radio, Tabata is looking into it. He's thinking of two things, playing your own MP3s and playing Final Fantasy or Square Enix title music. Legal issues surround the first thing, playing your own MP3s. The team's working on the latter. The car radio is definitely possible in Japan and the United States, but European laws are strict, says Tabata. A pop theme wouldn't fit within the game's world, so they won't be exploring that idea either. Moogles, Tabata. When I asked about Moogles, there wasn't enough of a response from the audience at TGS, so in the end, we won't be adding them in. Famitsu, there was a pretty big applause. How about we give our team numbers and show users real opinions? I'll consider, says Tabata. Music, there's a huge demand for a Shinomura arrangement of the Final Fantasy theme. Tabata wants to hear it too. Other themes, such as the Chocobo theme, are progressing well. Fishing. In Final Fantasy XV, there will be a record of what kinds of fish have been caught. You can catch fish that have lengths of up to one meter. You can fish in lakes, but currently the minigame does not allow fishing in seas. Tabata thinks it's cool to add the game while on the boat. How successful you are in fishing doesn't depend on your level, but rather how well you use the lure. Buddy things. Prompto takes photos with his smartphone, and for a certain reason, he wants to save pictures of him and his friends while on the road trip. Gladiolos has been a fan of Coleman and the outdoors since he was a kid, and he's collected various Coleman items since then. Gladio also likes fighting, so he researches techniques and skills. The skills he learns will be applied in friends-linked attacks. Chocobo writing. Battles can start even if you're riding on a chocobo. You won't fight while on a chocobo, though. Should your chocobo not want to fight when the battle begins, he will run away. The chocobo's stamina depends on the things you feed it. Good food means chocobos will avoid enemies, while bad food allows them to betray you. Because black chocobos are wild, you won't necessarily be able to ride them. Luna Freya Luna's stern gaze is not a result of being surrounded by all the soldiers. Rather, she's gazing into the future that awaits. When Luna brushes aside the rifle, she's not considering the present situation. The thing that awaits is rather intense, that's a hint. Her assistant, Gentiana, is not just any assistant. Rather, she herself is also a special existence, you could say. In order to prevent the plague of the star from advancing, Luna uses her powers. Because of this plague, as the days go by, the nights also lengthen. Luna is preventing the world from plunging into complete darkness. The long nights will also affect gameplay. When you advance in the story, the nights get longer. According to Tabata, there is a very important meaning behind the word dawn. Regarding the key visual of Noctis and Luna as children, the dog is delivering a message that connects Luna to Noctis. The dog is not a pet, but perhaps is similar to Gentiana. The white dog will show up too. Noctis' injury as a child allowed him to spend time with Luna, and the arranged marriage and the promise that Noct and Luna made as children are completely unrelated. If you hadn't guessed, Noctis' injury in the image is a result of his near-death experience. DLC Airship as DLC is the more likely outcome at this point. Potential Gilgamesh DLC could contain a scenario. Tabata wants to prepare things for users who want to play even more of 15, even after clearing the game. Gilgamesh is a good idea for that, according to him. March Event 
At the March event, Square Enix will not only announce the release date, but also the tech demo's official name and specifications. At this time, the company will also announce other collaborations, besides Coleman, that are deeply involved with the game's settings and real-world feeling. There will also be a bit of news that no one is expecting. It'll probably be huge news, says Tabata. Finally, to finish off the month, eight days later, on September 30th, 2015, Hajime Tabata announced through one of the game's official forums that Final Fantasy XV would be replacing the automatic weapon switching battle system from Episode Sky with real-time weapon switching. According to Tabata, instead of having players assign what weapons to use during which actions, players can assign four main weapons they can quickly switch between in real-time during battle at any point. This was definitely a revision that fans welcomed with open arms. Thus concludes news for Tokyo Game Show 2015 and the rest of the year's month of September. So with that, I would like to conclude today's episode of the Final Fantasy XV Countdown Retrospective. Thank you for tuning in. To be further updated on all things Final Fantasy, stay tuned right here on Yong Yeah. I'll see you guys next time. Yong out! <laughs>